Hey there, Internet. This is Trace Dominguez again for Test 2 Plus. Thanks for tuning in. We do five episodes every week, breaking down giant science topics into, well, five different episodes that you can explore with us every week. This week we're talking about genes. Think of this as sort of a podcast style show, so make sure you put your headphones in, maybe put me on in the background if you want. That's fine. I'm not going to be mad about it. I've got my notes right here, so let's see. The future of genes. That's what this week. The future of genes is super interesting. So right now, we've got this new technique called CRISPR. It's a very simple technique for modifying genetic information. It's so simple that it's actually got some scientists afraid of it. But if we can alter any piece of genetic material put in front of us, the future is going to be pretty crazy. I mean, there are some negatives there, obviously. We've got ethics of genetic editing. What happens if we decide we don't ever want to have natural birth again? Or what happens if the government or you know, the insurance companies will not help people who have not done genetic modification to eliminate diseases or eliminate predispositions for things like obesity or whatever else? As we learn more about the genetic makeup of humanity and we get better at editing it, it's only going to get more complicated for these questions. Who owns what we've created in that case? If I send out my sperm and egg to a company and they send me back something that I can use to make a baby, do they own it or do I? I don't know. These are obviously huge ethical questions that nobody is even exploring yet because it's considered unethical to edit human DNA. But what happens if something a little more accessible happens? Example, genetically modified plants. Plants don't know that they're not supposed to breed because they've been genetically modified. So instead, they'll release pollen into nature and then those genetically modified eggs and sperms from the plant get on a non-genetically modified plant. That's already happening, and in fact happens in farmers' fields from time to time with genetically modified corn. What if we create something that's so good it becomes an invasive species, destroying natural, non-genetically modified populations? Mosquitoes are terrible. I think we can all agree. Everybody hates freaking mosquitoes. But at the moment, they're causing lots of malaria around the world and it's very difficult to control mosquito populations. They can spray, but it doesn't always kill them all, and malaria still is infecting hundreds of thousands of people around the world every single year. One of the solutions is to genetically modify mosquitoes and release them into the wild. This has actually been proven successful already. What essentially happens is they take the genes of mosquitoes, they modify them so that these mosquitoes grow larger. Turns out that lady mosquitoes like larger male mosquitoes, so they'll only mate with the larger mosquito males that are genetically modified, remember. They're also genetically modified to be sterile. So while mating with them, they don't produce any more mosquitoes, and thus no more, you know, mosquito populations. Bye-bye malaria, which is great. Uh, that's a good thing. However, a bad thing from that is that no single species relies on mosquitoes for their food source, but so many different species relies on them just a little bit that it could cause problems and crashes in other species. Mosquitoes have three different life cycles. They have eggs, they have larvae, and then they have full-grown mosquitoes. The fish eat the larvae. Bats eat the mosquitoes when they're alive and large. None of them, again, a lot, but enough. If you don't have any mosquitoes, that could mean that there are fish populations that crash. If fish populations that are small that eat the mosquito larvae crash, then we could have other fish that eat that fish or other animals that eat that fish. They could crash. Then we could have animals on land or fish that we eat that no longer exist simply because we genetically modified something and didn't know what we were doing. That's bad. That's really, really bad. And remember, they think this is an easy thing. CRISPR makes things easy. Eventually, if we modify enough things with genetic, with genetic engineering, it could lead to a total collapse of the food chain if we don't pay attention. And it's not very easy to undo this stuff once it's been released onto the planet. Because let's be honest, everyone. Look at all of the things humans have ever created. Are they really well organized? Are they perfect in every way? No, we're not very good at that. 
we really don't know what we're doing. And in this case, with genetic modification, we have some idea, which is how we create GMOs and how we create things that do some things better. But overall better? That's a debate. Genetic modification of humans has already been talked about in science fiction and in uh, the halls of politics around the world. Think about the movie Gattaca, classic. <laughs> it's a perfect society. The best of humanity are born every day. And that might work in science fiction, but in real life, there are billions of people on this planet. Are we going to replace them all with designer babies? Are we only going to breed designer humans from now on? Sure, there's a, no disease. There's no problems with genetic uh, disorders of any kind, but they're also, you know, I mean, okay, let's, let's, I'm not going to pick on any specific, but let's think of the royal family. Their genes are not that different from each other. Also, not the most exciting chaps in the world. Imagine if everyone was the same. We had no variation in our genetic diet. We had no creativity because people wouldn't be that different. We'd all be pretty much the, you know, in America, probably the all-American person. There'd be no excitement. It'd be a bunch of really pretty people kind of happily going about their lives, all doing, you know, the same thing. But come on, you can only have so many lacrosse teams before you're like, this is boring. Can we do something else, please? There are also some positives, though. Genetic modification, I don't want to get down on it. It's awesome science. Uh, maybe you've heard of Angelina Jolie. She is not genetically modified, but, you know, it's a surprise, I know. But she has something called the BRCA or BRCA1 gene. The BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes are specific genes which are strong predictors of breast cancer. They're very common in certain genetic, human genetic lines. People of Ashkenazi Jewish ethnicity have this gene very often, uh, like Angelina Jolie. So what she did is once she learned this genetic information about herself, she got a double mastectomy. She removed her breast tissue so that she would not get breast cancer. She went from a high risk of breast cancer to a very low risk of breast cancer through what was a pretty controversial surgery in the public, but for her, this was the decision she wanted to make. Perhaps in the future, with genetic modification, she could have undergone gene therapy. She could have replaced those BRCA genes with working genes to counteract her mutation that had happened at some point in the Ashkenazi Jewish line. Perhaps instead, before she was born, they could have modified her genes and made it so that that BRCA gene was working from the start. All of this could have been done without major surgery. So imagine what this could bring for the future. We could cure cancer not necessarily by altering our genes at birth, but maybe doing gene therapy or swapping out problem mutations with this technique or this genetic modification. Imagine what you could do with this in the future. That's just one example. The BRCA gene is an example that we know of today. What if we could alter T cells, which are a type of immune cell, a macrophage, that could then attack cancer cells or attack diseases? We could program them to do that using genetic modification. SAN cells, which help the heart pump, are essentially our natural pacemaker. Sometimes those cells go haywire, so we have to insert a piece of technology with a battery into our bodies to make our heart work well. What if we could just inject some cells that would modify our current cells and turn them into sand cells? They've already started experimenting with that. We've got herpes, which was genetically modified to fight skin cancer. They've modified HIV to fight off incurable leukemia, and it may have worked in a young girl. They modified measles virus to fight blood cancer. They modified polio to fight brain cancer. Gene modification may be dangerous, precarious, and borderline unethical if we get too crazy with it, but it's ultimately, if we do it right, pretty damn awesome. Since it's basically brand new, though, <laughs> we don't even know what we can do with it. We don't know what we can do with it or how we should use it. We're just getting into this big sandbox. Guys, this week has been all about genes. I did it mainly from notes here and also from my own memory. So maybe you have more knowledge on this. Maybe I messed something up. Tell me down in the comments. And also, if you have more information, make sure you share that with us as well, because maybe some of you know about genetic modification. Make sure you subscribe to Test Tube Plus so that you get all of our videos all week so you don't miss any. And if you did miss some, check out those videos here. 
We talked about what genes are, talked about what they could do, where they could tell you about your history, and also what they're doing with them now and today, what they're going to do with them in the future. Thanks for watching Test Tube Plus. Keep coming back. We now have 25,000 subscribers. That's amazing. You guys are the best. Thank <laughs> you.